Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today in our new live session by Medcare Hospitals. Um, well, today my car reached the, the temperature of 47 degrees, so I think today's session is perfectly um, uh, for the right day. Um, today we're going to talk about best ways to protect uh, our skin during summer and what is the safest way um, to be exposed or to get exposed to sun, uh, tanning, going to the beach. Um, what's the common things that we mistakenly do uh, to our skin that, um, you know, uh, speeds up our wrinkles and pigmentation. So uh, for this session, I would like to welcome Dr. Jubita Youssef, specialist dermatologist at Medcare Hospital Sharjah and Medcare Women and Children uh, in Dubai. Dr. Jubita, thank you so much for being with us today. And as I mentioned in the start, today's weather hit 47 degrees, yes. um, which is kind of still not summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to hit more, I'm sure, uh, very soon. So today's session will be about how we can protect our skin, mm -hmm. our face from uh, the sun rays. Mm -hmm. um, also, I would like to encourage uh, our audience to share their questions uh, with us. Uh, you can share them through Instagram and Facebook. Uh, doctor. How can we protect our skin and why don't we go one step before and explain what is sun UV? Yeah, first of all, thank you Dalia for inviting me into this live session. So starting with sunlight, uh, I'll just give a brief idea of what sunlight is all about. Sunlight is made up of different types of uh, rays, including visible light, which you can see. Uh, then uh, there is UV or ultraviolet light, which is not visible to human eyes and then uh, infrared light. Now, looking at ultraviolet light or UV light, there are three different types. That is UVA, UVB, and UVC. Now, UVA and UVB, they have the ability to uh, cross the Earth's atmosphere and reach our skin, but UVC does not. Now, if you compare UVA and UVB, UVA is less intense compared mm. to UVB, but it is 30 to 50 percent more than uh, UVB. Now, uh, you might think that staying indoors or inside your car, you are protected from uh, sun rays, but no. UVA or ultraviolet A light can pass through windows of your car or at home and still can have effect on your skin. Yeah, so even on a cloudy day, people might think, yeah, I'm protected because there is cloud. No, only 20% of UV rays are filtered by clouds. So this is a very good uh, information. Uh, yes. Maybe not everyone knows about it. Yes, because usually people, they tend to say, oh, it's today, it's cloudy, so I'll just go out without any sunscreen. But that's not the right thing to do because 80% will still reach your skin surface and sun damage can happen because of that mistake. Okay. So that is pretty much about uh, what sunlight is all about. Mm. Yeah. So, and um, the effect on, on it on our skin, which one has more effect or damage on our skin? Now, sunlight can be good for our skin in terms of maintaining uh, vitamin D levels in our body and, you know, for uplifting of our mood. Yeah. But too much of sun can have, you know, negative impact on our skin, like it can cause skin damage, uh, starting from most commonly seen sunburn. Then hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation would mean excess pigment or uneven color of the skin, which is different from a suntan, mm. for example, sunspots. So it can be caused by UVA and UVB. Then comes premature aging. That is a big uh, concern. Uh, most of the time, people, they don't know that sun can, at 90% of early onset wrinkling or sagging is caused by sun. Because, uh, you know, we have uh, collagen, elastin in our skin, which gives a youthful or plumped up uh, appearance yeah. uh, to our skin. So sunlight, sunlight, basically UV rays, they tend to break down this collagen and elastin, leading to early onset sagging of mm. our skin and early onset wrinkles. Then uh, this damage is not just superficial. It can go to a deeper level and lead to problems, uh, including skin cancer. Which is a, uh, it's a, a big topic to discuss. But yeah, I yeah, think this will need a whole session for it, right? Yes. Uh, to talk about skin cancer. Yes, yeah. and then not to forget sun allergies. Yeah, caused by what is sun allergies? For example, a, a person is on some medications or a person has applied some medicines on the skin. Sunlight can interact with the medicine externally and internally and cause skin uh, irritation, skin rash. Hmm. Then there is other types of sun allergies. Medical terms will be like polymorphic light eruption. It's a, an, an, a, again a huge topic. Hmm. So allergies induced in the skin by UV rays. Now, doctor, what triggers this allergy? What kind of creams that we should avoid 
uh, or at least if we have to uh, apply it, then we need to stay away from the sun. The most common thing uh, would be tretinoin, like retin A, tretinoin based creams, which can sensitize your yeah. skin a lot to uh, sun rays. So normally when we prescribe those type of creams to patients we advise them strictly to be used only at night because if you put it on your skin and go and expose to sun yes it can cause severe irritation to the skin so mm. that is something then then there are products like any peeling products like glycolic or uh, you know and most of the time acne medications the creams given for acne okay uh, so and which is a very common uh, creams that uh, mm. especially you know youth uh, apply a it. lot yeah so we tell them strictly make sure you do not expose to sun so you use them only during the evening time because again it can interact with sun and cause skin uh, irritation skin redness and discomfort again this is a very good uh, piece of information maybe mm -hmm. not a lot of us know that mm -hmm. acne creams could cause sun irritation mm -hmm. and again we apply it and then we go down yes. or maybe we apply sunscreen over but it and remember and just to uh, make a point not all acne creams but majority of the acne creams. majority yeah, yeah. Uh, doctor when there is on the sunscreen a component called pa plus mm -hmm. what is that P uh, you don't have to go deep into what is the what is PA plus or SPF or mineral or titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. Yeah. Just make sure you, you get a sunscreen which is mentioned broad spectrum and at least SPF 30 or 50. That is enough. Uh, no need to go deeper into the ingredient part of the sunscreen. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, do you get any patients with uh, sunscreen allergies? Yes, we do. Because people with a very sensitive skin patients who have rosacea who are in fact uh, uh, asked not to expose to sun and we prescribe sunscreens to them they come back next day with allergy to the sunscreen product mm. because skin is quite sensitive so there's not a one uh, perfect cream for all skin uh, no. right you're, you're we have right. to go yes. through to testing and to trying the skin type. for example if someone has oily skin we should give a, a oil free sunscreen or water based sunscreen so depending on the skin type yes we choose the correct sunscreen for mm. them uh, just to remind our audience who just joined us, uh, today's topic is best ways to protect our skin uh, during summer uh, with Dr. Jubita Yusuf, specialist dermatologist at Medcare Hospital, Sharjah and Medcare Women and Child in Dubai. Uh, please uh, share your questions and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Okay, um, doctor, um, exposed or getting exposed to too much sun. Mm. What is too much sun? Because again, with summer, people uh -huh. uh, tend to tan and spend, you know, longer hours in the sun. Uh -huh. um, plus that, so the duration and what's the best time we can get exposed to the sun? Now, it's a very important uh, question. The answer would be there is no such thing uh, uh, as a healthy tan or a safe tan. Mm. If you ask me or any dermatologist, uh, they would totally go against uh, uh, tan, especially artificial tanning. Indoor tanning booth should entirely be avoided. Uh, but still, it would, if you would like to have some quality time outdoors, yeah. the best time would be before 10 a.m. in the morning and after 4 p.m. in the evening. But still, you should follow sun protective measures like a broad spectrum sunscreen and uh, sun protective clothing. And not to forget, reapplying sunblock is very important if you stay outdoors for a longer period of time, especially between 10 and 4 p.m. Mm. So, for example, if you look at UVA light, uh, it's at uh, a constant intensity throughout the day, but if you look at UVB, they fluctuate in intensity and they are at the strongest at uh, noon time. Yeah. So that is the time we should avoid direct uh, and prolonged sun exposure mm. and make sure to reapply sunscreen if you are outdoors during that time between 10 and 4 p.m. Again, one of the common mistakes that we do or we think that we apply it once and that's more than enough. Uh, that's not uh, that's not the right thing to do. You mm. should reapply, especially uh, SPF, if you have SPF 50, that's the best thing to do. But every two hours, it should be reapplied if you are outdoors. Doctor, the product that says over 50, so looking at 75 plus and, and, and 80, mm. um, are these just there out there for marketing purposes or they're very, uh, they're very good to use? That's a good question. Higher SPF number doesn't mean uh, better protection because SPF number basically is only for UVB. Uh, so UVA is, uh, is not, we are not protected from UVA with a higher SPF number. Mm. So it's always wise to choose a sunscreen. SPF 30 to 50 is good, but it should be mentioned broad spectrum. Broad so, spectrum yeah, is what so we it, need to look yes, uh, so when we buy it. UVA and UVB. Do not just look at the SPF number because SPF 100, SPF 50, they all offer the same level of protection. Mm. But if you're using SPF 50, like I mentioned, reapply every two hours. Perfect. Yes. Um, Dr. Jubita, what's the common mistakes that uh, you find your patients are, are mentioning and, and you highlight it to them? Uh -huh. During summer time? During summer, yes. 
Now, most of us think just putting some uh, sunscreen on is uh, enough. No, again, like I mentioned, look at the SPF number, look at whether it's broad spectrum or not, and not and forgetting to reapply is one common mistake that we should avoid. So, uh, assuming that makeup uh, serves as a sunscreen, it's again a mistake that a lot of people uh, do. So make sure you put a sunscreen below your makeup before you go outdoors during the daytime. And then assuming dark skin people, they are naturally protected from uh, sun damage. Again, it's uh, it's not right. Dark it's a common people, mistake. Again. Yes, yeah. they also get uh, uh, sun damage. Uh, then uh, what else? Uh, assuming that on a cloudy day, you are safe to go out you know, for hours under the sun in the beach and pool again. It's a common mistake because, like I told you, sun uh, clouds, they don't block UV, UVB completely. Only 20% mm. is blocked. So that is something people should uh, always keep in mind. And forgetting to put sunscreen on other sun-exposed areas of your body, like, for example, back of your hands, the V of your neck, the ear lobes. You know, when you're wearing shorts, forgetting to put sunscreen on your legs. So those are common mistakes that patients, people usually do. Mm. So this hey. has to be addressed. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Jabitha, now um, we sometimes see people going out tanning mm -hmm. wearing makeup <laughs> how is that affecting your skin first of all tanning is not safe for our skin uh, if, we, if we spend the whole you know sessions and sessions talking about not uh, spending yes. people will tend to spend and get the tan that they want yes <laughs> so we'll try to keep it as safe as possible for them exactly but wearing makeup like we already discussed again yeah you are uh, putting a heavy or uh, oil-based uh, makeup on your face, then you're going out in the sun. Definitely, it will irritate your skin. It can make you break out. You can get acne after sun exposure, especially wearing a heavy makeup on your face. So one thing I forgot to mention in summer season, cleansing your face is something that has to be done irrespective of the season. Mm. So make sure after you're out, after you're home, uh, after uh, you know, a long day out in the sun, make sure the skin is properly cleansed before you go to bed because then again, it can have side effects like acne, breakout. Yeah. And yes. what's the best way to cleanse our face? Again, depending on your skin type. Mm. So the product has to be chosen. For example, a person with oily skin would need a totally different cleanser. A person with a dry skin would need a totally different cleanser. But make sure you choose something that is not very harsh on your skin. Because we don't want the skin to get really dry and stretchy after using you know, a harsh uh, cleanser on your face. So mm. best way is to choose the correct sun, uh, product based on your skin type after consulting with a dermatologist. Uh, drifting a little bit away from uh, the sun exposure and yeah. the skin, uh. um, sleeping uh. while you have makeup on your face. Uh. Uh, uh, yeah, if we can talk about it, because it's, again, it's a very common thing that sometimes it's a mistake we yes. people do. So, like we already discussed, make sure your face is cleansed well before you go to bed. So, makeup has to be removed totally from around the eyes, from your entire face, from your neck, even from your lips, mm. and and you can use a cleanser that suits your skin type before you go to bed. So should never go to sleep with the makeup on. Dr. Jabitha, if we talk about treatment now, so mm. we are in a phase of, yes, there is uh, some skin pigmentation or some skin mm. allergy, mm -hmm. uh, whatever the diagnosis would be. Mm. Um, what is the treatment? So are we going with cream treatments or does it go severe and we can go under laser treatment? If you can take us through the treatments that you uh, prefer with your patients. I'll just give a brief idea. Yeah. If, you, if you want me to talk about uh, pigmentation, it depends on the level of pigmentation, extent of the pigmentation, the skin type of the patient, age of the patient. For example, mild pigmentation can easily be treated with topical like external medications. A uh, patient can use it at home. Uh, but there is no guarantee uh, topical treatment will fix the pigmentation because some patients, yes, they respond very well to cream, but some they show no improvement at all. Then they then we step up the treatment plan. We go to option number two, which is usually chemical peels. Mm. Uh, patients can do it at home, but prefer, it's better to do it in a hospital or clinic setup. Again, there is no guarantee patient can recover from pigment because pigmentation is not easy to treat. And the last option is laser, laser mm. treatment for pigmentation. Lot of patients, they benefit from laser treatment, but many patients, they uh, give a feedback. Once they've recovered completely, the pigmentation tends to come back, either because they don't follow proper sun protection after the treatment is completed, they don't take good care of the skin, and they don't do maintenance treatment at home. Mm. So pigmentation is actually, uh, to be honest, a very difficult uh, thing to be treated. Mm. Some patients, they benefit a lot. Some, they don't, no matter what treatment we give, they do not respond. 
Okay. Uh, patients it? coming to you with mm. sunburn or sun allergies, mm. uh, the one that we touched uh, mm. on mm. during our conversation, mm -hmm. what would be the treatment for them? A sunburn uh, treatment is based on the severity. For mm. minor sunburn, we advise cold compress, some topical preparation, some medicine given for pain or for itching. But severe sunburn, sometimes we even need to admit the patient to the hospital. Yeah, because uh, sunburn is not something that can be taken lightly. Yes. Severe sunburn sometimes need proper medical and even emergency care. Mm. Yeah. And for allergies? Again, depending on the type of allergy, most of the sun allergies, they respond to topical treatment, external medications and some pills given to control the itching and the redness, yeah. Uh, doctor, I will pick up on something you mentioned is the collagen level in the mm -hmm. skin. Mm -hmm. um, how do you know that the collagen level is, is lower than, than the normal level or how can we enhance the collagen level in our skin? Now, uh, uh, you want me to talk about the collagen breakdown uh, yes. from sun? We cannot assess the level of collagen in our skin, but we know that uh, the collagen damage or uh, elastin damage has happened when a young patient comes to you with uh, premature uh, wrinkling or sagging of the skin and, uh, and evidence of, you know, cumulative, chronic cumulative sun yeah. damage. So we know there is damage happened to collagen and elastin. We cannot reverse it totally, but we can help, you know, by uh, topical products which contain collagen, hyaluronic acid as uh, anti-aging treatment but again you have to start at a very young age because already damage has happened mm. so that is why sun protection should start from a very early age from childhood so that you don't you know come with uh, premature wrinkling at a young, very young age okay yeah. um, again the common mistakes that we do when we mm. go tanning mm. uh, you know the home remedies and the things not remedies but the home mixes of mm -hmm. uh, you know, a baby oil when we apply in the skin to get the best um, uh, tan. Mm -hmm. that's Can you? A very, yeah, that's a very very unhealthy practice. Yeah, using uh, oil mm. and going out in the sun, it'll add to the sun damage. Yeah. So if you want to have a very youthful skin for a longer period of time, avoid tanning. Avoid tanning, especially indoor tanning booths, totally should be avoided. Now, this American Academy of Dermatology, they do not recommend sun exposure to maintain vitamin D levels in our body. Because mm. usually people, they go to the sun saying that I want to improve my vitamin D levels. Better get them through proper diet and through supplements, okay. but not through tanning. Uh, doctor, I have a live question here. Um, my skin gets tanned very easily, mm. even in the kitchen. So even without getting exposed, she wants to say, even without getting exposed to uh, direct sun, she gets uh -huh. tanned easily. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How can she protect her skin? Probably it's, it's a sensitive skin that and gets... It's it. very unlikely that you get a tan while you are indoors in the kitchen. No, she's, yeah. she's probably saying in the kitchen as referring to easily uh, to get tanned. Uh, how can she protect? What kind of uh, sunscreen that she can apply uh, uh -huh. to protect her skin? It's a sensitive skin that easily get tanned even without a uh, harsh sun. She uh, she gets tanned while she's she she easily gets yeah even indoors she gets maybe tanned. it's not yeah. a tan okay maybe it's uh, some skin sensitivity from heat from the oven okay because heat from the oven will never give a tan hmm. spending long hours uh, in the kitchen will never give you a tan. Okay. So maybe she has sensitivity from heat, so avoid prolonged exposure to heat from the oven or, uh, you know, that's the best thing to do. Mm. Use products uh, which are uh, suiting her skin type. If she has sensitive skin, she should choose the correct products for her skin type. Right. But after consulting with a dermatologist, but you will never get a tan by standing in the kitchen for long hours. So that's, uh, again, a... Uh, uh, it's something that you need to consider, yes, right? Yes, yes. And, and you will never get a tan indoors from the, while working in the kitchen. Mm. Okay, uh, doctor, before we end our session, mm. if we want to wrap up uh, our conversation mm. on how uh, to protect our skin during summer, mm. uh, also if we can just have a quick line on the food mm. uh, that we need to consume during summer, um, I'm sure water is very important, but mm. what kind of minerals or vitamins or food that we need to uh, fill our body with to protect us uh, during summer and, and the heat? Uh, now, uh, hydrating yourself is very, very important. Following a healthy, balanced uh, diet is very important. So when you look at healthy, balanced diet, uh, make sure you consume enough amount of vitamin A, vitamin C, and all multivitamins, vitamin B, B complex, they're all very good for our skin. Uh, then uh, get good amount of sleep and good rest, again, to have a glowing skin during summer season, irrespective of the season. Okay, uh, doctor, with this, I would like to end our session today. Um, our session was about the uh, best ways to protect your skin during summer. 
with Dr. Jubita Youssef, specialist uh, dermatologist at Medcare Hospital Sharjah and Medcare Women and Children. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your questions and see you on our next session.